Hi there, it's Asia. In IELTS Writing Task 2, it would be inappropriate to use quite a few English words that we normally use a lot. Uh, this is because Task 2 is kind of formal, both academic and general training, and I'm gonna tell you which words are to be precise, which types of words you must avoid. Stick with me! And let's get started. Here is a simple tip to begin. Avoid contractions such as I am or is. Instead, write I am, it is. The D in heed can mean had or would. Please note that the full form of can't is cannot in one word. It won't is it will not. As for gonna and wanna, this is not standard English. If you say going to and want to very fast without carefully pronouncing each word, it can sound like gonna and wanna, but that's how we speak. And you shouldn't use them in your writing. Next, avoid you and your. You can clearly see the results. Addressing readers using you can make your essay sound informal. It can also bring assumptions that are not there. Are you absolutely sure the examiner can see the results? Instead, use one, which is a formal way to say any one person. One can clearly see the results. Or you could use the passive voice. The results can clearly be seen. Avoid informal words. Here are some common ones that I regularly see in essays. A kid or kids. Say, a child or children. In some cases, you can use the word offspring, which means a child or children of a particular person. So even if you mean several children, say offspring without an S at the end. Parents may have a number of problems with their teenage offspring. However, if you're talking about children without mentioning their parents, you must use the word children. Children should be allowed to read for pleasure. In this particular sentence, we can't use offspring because there is nothing about their parents. Next kind of or sort of. Just leave them out. Instead of the results were sort of unclear, just write the results were unclear. The word thing is also informal if you use it instead of other words. Uh, for example, young people learn a lot of things at university. It's better to say that they learn many useful skills, not things. I've also replaced a lot with many, but we'll talk about it a bit later. Here is another example. Uh, the government should do a couple of things. No, a formal version is the government should adopt two policies. Next. When you're giving a list of several things, Avoid finishing with so on and so forth or etc. In a UK high school, children can choose among a large number of subjects such as business, drama, Latin and so forth. Instead of so forth, use this formula A, B and C. Business, drama and Latin. Full stop. And don't forget AND before the last item to show that you've finished your list. If you just say business, drama, Latin, full stop, your sentence will sound unfinished. Don't forget and. Avoid informal sentence starters. Conjunctions also and, but, so can be used in any type of writing, but they become too informal if you use them at the beginning of sentences. Here is what I mean. Children should learn science at school. That's fine. Also, they benefit from learning foreign languages. And 
teaching how to use computers can help young people develop useful skills. But many other subjects are equally important. So a varied curriculum brings the best results. All these sentences sound informal because they begin with also and but so. Replace them with more formal linkers. Also and and help us add an idea. Use moreover, furthermore or additionally. Moreover, children benefit from learning foreign languages. Additionally, teaching how to use computers can help young people develop useful skills. These sentences are much more formal, but can be replaced with however or nevertheless. Nevertheless, many other subjects are equally important. So is used to give a result. A more formal alternative to so is therefore. Therefore, a varied curriculum brings the best results. Just to confirm, you can safely continue to use also, and, and but in the middle of sentences. Avoid informal quantifiers. Quantifiers are words that help us describe a quantity of something without giving any numbers, such as a lot of or a couple of. These quantifiers are informal. We use them when we speak. Here are some more formal alternatives for IELTS writing. Instead of a lot of, lots of, or quite a few, say many, much, a number of. Young people learn many useful skills at university. You might have learned at school that you should only use many and much if you are asking a question or if your sentence is negative. Do they learn many skills? No, they don't learn many skills. But in a formal writing style, you can and should use many and much. There is much concern about social media addiction among young people. This sentence sounds formal. And these examples are for IELTS writing. In IELTS speaking, your style should be more informal and it's better to use a lot. Uh, a sentence, I've spent much money on my new smartphone, sounds a bit weird. In an informal situation, it's better to say, I've spent a lot of money on my new smartphone. Okay, quantifiers, a few, a bit of, a couple of, are all informal too. Use some, several, or a small number. Instead of, a few people disagree with this opinion, say, some people disagree. You can also use the exact number. Then, the government should adopt a couple of policies, becomes, the government should adopt two policies. It's short and to the point. Next, avoid intensifiers. Very, really, so, and to are known as intensifiers because they make adjectives or adverbs stronger. It's so important. A really strong proposal. A very dangerous situation. It's not incorrect to use them. And a lot of native speakers use and overuse them too. But if we're talking about achieving a formal style in your essay, then avoid them. Just leave them out. It's important, a strong proposal, a dangerous situation. Speaking about adjectives, some of them are so simple that they would feel informal in a formal essay. Big, good, bad are some of them. And you can replace them with more formal synonyms. I actually have a PDF list with synonyms for 20 most common adjectives you could use in IELTS writing, and you can download it right now. Thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!